Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations for real solutions. We have x squared plus 6y equals negative 17, y squared plus 4z equals 1, z squared plus 2x equals 2. And we're looking for real solutions. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. Now, for my first method, I'm going to isolate y from the first equation. So y can be written as negative 17 minus x squared divided by 6. And then from the third equation, I'm going to isolate z. And z can be written as 1 minus y squared over 4. Now, notice that we already have an expression for y y was written in terms of x so now i can substitute that here and that's going to give me an expression in terms of x for z so let's go ahead and replace y with what it is but since we're squaring it we can go ahead and write the opposite of this because when you square it's not going to matter i mean you could write the same thing as well but squaring this quantity is actually easier than the other one i believe okay great so now we got an expression for y in terms of x and we got an expression for z in terms of x. Now let's go ahead and simplify z. If you square the top and subtract it from 1, you're going to get the following. 1 minus 289 plus 34x squared plus x to the fourth power. And then that's going to be divided by 36. And all of, the, all of that is going to be divided by 4. And then... To simplify, we're going to make a common denominator in the numerator and then uh, multiply the denominators. 36 times 4 is going to give us 144. So 1 times 36 is going to be 36 minus 289. That's going to be negative 253 and then minus 34x squared because everything um, here will be negated because of the minus sign. And I'm going to subtract x to the fourth power. And that is going to be divided by 36 times 4 which is 144. So that is z in terms of x, right? And we already got y in terms of x. So everything, it's, it's better if you're solving a system of equations, obviously it makes sense if you use the same variable uh, because that's going to eliminate, um, you know, the number of equations you're dealing with. Anyways, so now is a good time to use the third equation since we have this, z squared plus 2x equals 2 and we have z in terms of x and we used y for that remember so we're going to use that equation z squared plus 2x equals 2 that's my third equation and now i'm going to replace z with what it is now sorry for the pain i have to put you through from now on until the end of the first method so bear with me i'm going to replace z with that so it's going to be negative 253 minus 34x squared minus x to the fourth power divided by 144 and that is going to be squared plus 2x that comes from here and the whole thing is equal to 2 and now we're going to simplify in, uh, what's inside the parentheses and bear with me don't worry I've, I've done the work for you hopefully I didn't get it wrong uh, we'll see at the end what that's going to look like so when we square this term, uh, it's going to give us six terms. Um, that's going to be like an eighth degree equation with even powers only in the numerator. So it's going to become x to the eighth power. So basically, I'm negating everything in the numerator because I'm squaring it, so it doesn't matter. From here, I get x to the eighth power plus 68 x to the sixth power. I probably have to move this a little bit to the left so that I have room. So it's going to be x to the eighth plus 68 x to the sixth plus 1,662 x to the fourth power plus 17,204 x squared plus 64,009. And then uh, the two x, I, I wanna subtract it from the two so that I don't have to deal with it. Like this way I don't have to make a common denominator. And the, the whole thing is gonna be divided by 144 squared, which is 20,736. And then that is equal to two minus two x. So I'm subtracting this two x here. Great, so now we're gonna cross multiply and get an octic equation. And then we're gonna go for the solution of that octic equation. Great, so 
when you distribute and arrange the terms, if I'm not mistaken, this is what you should be getting, x to the eighth power plus 68 x to the sixth power plus 1,662 x to the fourth power plus 17,204 x squared plus 41,472 x plus 22,537 and the whole thing is equal to zero. Now, one thing that's interesting about this equation, and I know that's very hard to guess or find out, but turns out that this can be factored, and one of the factors is going to be x plus 1. But when you divide it by x plus 1, you're going to get x plus 1 as a factor one more time. In other words, this is what you get from here. Again, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you should be getting x plus 1 quantity squared multiplied by x to the 6th power minus 2x to the 5th power plus 71x to the 4th power minus 140x to the 3rd power plus 1,871x squared minus 3,602x plus 22,537. Since we have an x uh, plus 1 quantity squared, the constant term is going to be unchanged. Great. So and this whole thing is going to equal 0. Awesome. Well, this basically shows us that x equals negative 1 from here. And since we're looking for real solutions, I don't think we're going to get any other real solutions from the uh, sixth degree equation. But anyways, from here, we can say, say that x equals negative 1. And now by way of substitution, we can find the other variables. y equals, now notice that y could be written as negative 17 minus x squared divided by 6. So it's just going to be negative 17 minus 1 divided by 6, right? Negative 17 minus x squared. No, now, be careful here. x is negative, but when you square it, it becomes a positive 1. That's why you subtract 1 from negative 17. And from here, y becomes negative 3. Awesome. Let's go ahead and find z. You know that z can be written as 1 minus y squared over 4 from here. And we know that y is equal to negative 3. So it's 1 minus 9 divided by 4. And from here, z is just going to be negative 2. So we basically we basically get the order triple x, y, z as negative 1, comma, negative 3, comma, negative 2. Obviously, they're not interchangeable because the equations are not symmetric. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now and see what that looks like. For my second method, obviously, the first method is always, almost always, more and more painful. But the goal is not just, you know, the past the time, but it's more like to introduce different ways of thinking about the problem. The shortest method is not always the best or the most elegant. Sometimes longer methods uh, can also teach you stuff. But anyways, so I have the three equations. Let me rewrite those. x squared plus 6y is equal to negative 17. y squared plus 4z is equal to 1 and z squared plus 2x is equal to 2. So here's what I'm going to do for my second method. I'm going to add these equations up and get the following. x squared plus 6y plus y squared plus 4z plus z squared plus 2x is equal to negative 17 plus 3, which is negative 14. Now, this method obviously does not always give you the good answer, but for this problem, um, it's going to work. And remember, we're looking for real solutions, not complex solutions. And um, if you were looking for complex solutions, obviously, you could go for the sixth degree equation. I don't know. I haven't checked it, but I'm uh, just assuming that there are no real solutions to that equation. We could probably check that later on and just let me know if you do. But anyways, so here's what I would like to do here. Uh, I would like to complete the square. So I have an x squared and I have a 2x. So then I can write this as x squared plus 2x. And then I want to add 1 to this. We're going to keep track of what we're adding, and now we're going to add that uh, on both sides. And then I have the y squared with the 6y. That requires a 9, as you know, to complete the square. Keep track of the numbers. And then z squared plus, you know, we have a z squared and we have a 4z. That is going to require a 4. Now, notice that I added 1, I added 9, and I added 4. That is equivalent to adding... Uh, 14 to both sides, and when you add 14 to negative 14, you're going to get 0. Okay, great. Now, when I do this, complete the square thing, notice that I have now a sum of three squares. Let's go ahead and write it as uh, perfect squares. x plus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared plus z plus 2 
quantity squared is equal to zero. Remember, x, y, z are real numbers. Therefore, when you have a sum of squares that equals zero, then each sum or each term in the sum uh, needs to be zero. Otherwise, if one of them is positive, then the other one has to be negative, so on and so forth, but that's impossible. Therefore, all of these have to equal zero. And that gives us a really cool thing. One equation, three variables, and uh, we get a solution. And we're not looking for integer solutions, but real solutions, remember that. So set it equal to zero, set it equal to zero, set it equal to zero. That's the only possibility with real numbers. So from here, we get x equals negative one, y equals negative three, and z equals negative two as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.